Today's song is By Your Side by 10th Avenue North. Their only platinum single to date, this song was huge for them and was a breakout hit off their first album in 2008. It's their most viewed song on YouTube, although not from their channel, which I'd imagine is pretty annoying. Mike Donahue, lead singer and co-writer of the song, talks about how it's a call to anyone who is fighting against God thinking they have to work to earn his favor. It's urging people to stop looking at what you can do for God and look at what God has done for you through his son on the cross. Let's ignore the fact that they rhyme side with night twice and talk about the content. The song is full of Bible references, staying faithful to scripture as much as possible. The song is written from the perspective of the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to seek and to save the lost. He asks in the first verse, We know that it's by grace that we are saved, not through our own works. The whole first verse is full of questions, asking why anyone would look for satisfaction anywhere other than in Christ. The Bible likens this to having broken cisterns that can't hold water. It's a futile pursuit. The Lord Jesus told the Samaritan woman in John 4 that, while we may thirst on earth, the water he provides will eternally satisfy. The second verse gives the reason why we don't have to struggle or fight for God's approval. Christ offers his hands and side with the marks of Calvary. By his sacrifice, we are now offered life. We can thank God that our salvation is not dependent on anything we do. But while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Now we know that what the chorus says is true. He'll never leave us. Nothing can separate us from his love. Or remove us from his hands. Despite the good in the song, there are some questionable areas. Firstly, while it's true that God is loving and sent his son to die for us, it's important to remember that God hates sin and that his judgment of sin is severe. Both God's love and God's wrath can be true at the same time. He is love, but he is also just. The song may unintentionally downplay the fact that sin is evil and against God, and not just an innocent mistake or accident. When the gospel is presented, it should be presented in its entirety, not just parts of it. Secondly, in a similar vein, although the idea of being completely unable to save ourselves or earn the grace of God is entirely biblical, there is no mention of repentance in this song. The good news of the gospel is that Christ died for our sins, but our response is twofold. It is through faith in the finished work of Christ, which allows us to be forgiven, and also through repentance of sins and turning away from who we once were. No, we can't earn our salvation, but we know that if we continue in sin, then we have not truly been saved. We are changed to do good works, and it's by those works that we'll be known. Our actions don't earn our salvation, they're evidence of it. They're the proof of our faith. No, you don't have to change or become a good person to be saved. You can be saved right now, whoever you are. But once we're born again, our lives should reflect it. Christ is both our Savior and Lord, not just our Savior. He saves us, and now we live to serve him. Lastly, There's room for misinterpretation in the song's general meaning. With lines like, why are you trying to earn grace? And with the second verse clearly referring to the gospel and ending with the line, it's natural to interpret the song as directed towards unbelievers who realize they're sinners, but struggle with the idea of being saved because of their past or present sinfulness. This can happen Some may believe themselves to be unworthy of God's grace, but that's what grace is. The Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. Our love towards him is only in return to the greater love we've been shown. However, there are lines like, that could lead one to interpret the song as a message to Christians who may have fallen or backslidden and struggle with feelings of guilt or remorse. This can also happen. We can sometimes lose sight of God and his grace, but we can rest in the fact that our salvation rests securely in the work of Christ and not anything we do. 
He has given us the assurance that if we are in Christ, we cannot be removed. But the point is, it's not clear which interpretation is right. Perhaps one could say the song is for both groups of people, saved and unsaved. That's true, I guess, but it certainly complicates the song if you're an unbeliever and you think that you're being held by the hands of God without faith and outside of Christ. This is not a biblical message. Only those who turn to Christ and are rescued by him are given this assurance. Ultimately, most people probably won't think too deeply about these lyrics to the point where this would confuse them, but casual and uncritical singing isn't a good thing. Unfortunately, another thing that's not good about the song is the uniqueness score. The second verse of the song, as well as the bridge, have half as many lines as the first verse, so both are counted as half a stanza in the formula. Plugging in the numbers, comparing the ratio of unique words to the ratio of unique stanzas, as well as the number of times the song was sung, the uniqueness score comes out to 21%, which is a bland level of lyrical uniqueness. A lot of this is due to the number of times the chorus is sung. It's a catchy hook that they might have gone overboard with, as the score illustrates. So, 10th Avenue North's By Your Side, a message of grace to the searching and hurting that can be repetitive and confusing at times. Are they just lyrics? Decide for yourself. And let me know in the comments 